Get out taking photos more, but take fewer photos. Hi, and a very warm welcome to episode 186, no less, of the Photography Explained podcast. Blimey, 186. How did that happen? I hope you're well. I'm your host, Rick, and in each episode, I will explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 27 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. I'm a professionally qualified photographer based in England with a lifetime of photographic experience, which I share with you in my podcast. OK, so here is the answery bit. Get out more and take photos, but take fewer photos. This will help you take better photos. It really will. Getting out more and taking photos gives you lots more opportunities to create new stuff. But don't try to create too much new stuff or you'll just end up with lots of average photos that you do not have any time to do anything meaningful with. Or as my script says, meaningfully. Meaningful is better. And none of us want that, do we? No, we don't, Rick. Right, so that was the answer bit. This is the talky bit. Yes, this is a very talky episode. First off, the case for getting out more and taking photos. Now, there's no downside to this. Every time you get out taking photos, you can create something new. And that is what photography is all about. Drawing with light. That is what photography actually is. So get out more taking photos and you are practicing what photography actually is, which has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Rick. Getting out and taking photos gets us away from our computers and other devices, which is good for the mind and the body. And it also gets us off social media, which has to be a good thing as well. So it's all good. There is no downside to getting out taking photos. No downside at all. But there is one negative, of course there is. If only life was that simple. This is the negative. Now, if you go out loads and take loads of photos, what are you likely to end up with? Well, if you're lucky, you might have captured a load of average photos. But this also means you've got a load of photos that you don't do anything with. Well, if you can't see the good stuff, what's the point? You also have a catalogue full of average photos. Average photos can be boring, they can be uninspiring, they can be plain dull uninteresting average photos are not what we're after and you might have edited some of them but probably not many if any now you've got so many photos you can't see where the good ones are if there are any so you need a considerable amount of time to find something decent to edit like i say if there is anything alternatively you're spending a ton of time editing a load of average photos now if you're starting with an average photo editing isn't going to turn an average photo into a great photo is it so why is this well if you go out and take lots of photos you can't be spending much time and thought on the taking photos bit can you no you can't and that is the problem it's the taking the photos bit that is the important bit that is what photography is all about Photography is drawing with light. I'm happy to repeat myself. And in photography, how do you draw with light? You take photos. So you need to think about it carefully. You need to spend time, effort and thought on taking the photos. And here is the case for taking fewer photos and therefore creating fewer pictures, which gives you better photos and less rubbish. And Yeah, before I go on, I just need to congratulate myself here on my correct grammar. See, I said take fewer photos and not less photos. Well done, Rick. I'm happy with that. (laughs) These small things, they mean a lot to me, you know. (laughs) Right. (laughs) If you consciously take fewer photos and you think about what you're taking photos of, there is a great chance that you will take better photos. If you take fewer, better photos, you are not cluttering your storage space with rubbish. Nope, your hard drive will thank you and you'll have less wear on every memory card that you possess. See, everyone's going to thank you for taking fewer photos. And if you take fewer photos, you can see the good stuff. And this, this can massively increase your enjoyment of digital photography. There's something horrible about having to trawl through a load of rubbish trying to find a good photo. 
And that what this also means is that no longer will you be out there photographing everything and anything without any thought. Okay, so I just want to fly back to the last episode. Just remember this thing that I said, which is this. How my one photo rule can help you. Don't worry, I've rewritten this. It's different from the last episode. So the basic principle is this. Take one photo. Well, of course it is. I'm talking about a sunrise, you get one photo. And if you do that, you can actually enjoy that wonderful golden hour experience rather than spending the entire time panicking, trying to get 75 fantastic but very similar photos. I've done this and it makes a massive difference. So when you get there, make that your aim. Take one photo. And when I'm photographing a building, giving you a practical, real example, I'll take one photo of the front and then I'll move on. And I won't take four or five photos of the front from slightly different angles. I used to do this, but I don't anymore. Just to expand on this to explain properly, I, I'm not saying go out and photograph a building and take one photo. What I'm saying is this. If I need to give a client 20 photos for a shoot, if I take 20 photos, I have absolutely nailed it. If I take 100 photos, I consider that a failure because I've got 80 photos I've got to plough through to find the 20 good ones. Well, I've actually got 100 photos to plough through. I haven't I'm thinking about it. Yeah, there's 80 rubbish photos there probably I've got to get rid of, but I've got more photos to go through. And going through rubbish photos is boring. Right, I hope that clarifies my one photo rule. Taking one photo is the best way to improve your photography. That might be a bit extreme, so here's the um, the moderated rule. It's the, it's the take fewer photos rule. Yes, it's moderated and still grammatically correct. So the one photo rule, it might be too much for you. And that's fine, I get it, I understand. You might find the one photo rule uncomfortable, too restricting. So this is what you do. To begin with, make a conscious decision to take fewer photos than you would typically take. And making this decision is the starting point of the journey to photographic happiness. Yes, dear listener, this is a journey after all, from what we've been used to doing to where we want to get to, which is taking fewer but better photos. And another thing from the last episode I just want to, well, regurgitate. And <laughs> let's be honest, I'm regurgitating stuff from the last episode, but that's fine because these points are relevant. It was the portfolio swappers thing. Always try to take a better photo. Last episode, we talked about this. So you've chosen your 20 best photos, no more than 20. So every time you go out and take photos, aim to get one image that can go in your portfolio. But to do this, you've got to remove an image. So you have to create a better new image, don't you? And this really works. It really helps focusing your mind, knowing what you have to do to get a new photo in your portfolio. Now, if we think of professional photographers, they don't just take photos of anything. They think about every photo that they take. The thinking is a big part of a professional photographer's workflow. OK, so these things from the last episode were entirely relevant to this episode. I mean, blimey, sometimes it, it seems like this stuff's planned, doesn't it? You know, it's not just thrown together. Honest. Right. Concentrate on the main subject of a photo. Think about your camera settings and strive to get the best results every time you take a photo. Yep, that's what you need to do. It's all about thinking about taking better photos. That's your number one priority. And I hate the term number one priority because priority is meant to mean priority. There's only one. There can't be two. I think that goes back to the origin of the word, but I'm waffling there, aren't I? Shut up, Rick. Right. What if I use my phone to take photos and not a camera? Well, it's even easier to take loads of rubbish with our mobile devices, isn't it? Because they're so easy to use and they're always with us. I know it's easy to take loads of rubbish photos with digital cameras, but it's much easier with phones, isn't it? Phones have worsened the problem. Now, that's not a criticism of smartphone cameras. Far from it. They are amazing things. But they have removed the deliberateness of taking a photo. That conscious act of stopping, getting your camera out and taking a photo. Now, Phones have transformed photography into something else altogether. Again, it's not a criticism. 
I'm not saying, oh, phones are bad, we shouldn't be having them, throw them all out and let's stick with phone cameras from the 1780s or something, or 1840s to be more accurate. No, it's the natural evolution of photography made possible by advances in technology. I get that. I just want people to know that there is more to photography than taking endless, thoughtless photos with our phones. There is a much more considered, deliberate, thoughtful part of photography that people who've gotten into photography with the phones might never know about. Well, not unless <laughs> not unless they listen to me. <laughs> so this is what you need to do. This is good, this. this. This is something I came up with, which I'm quite happy with. Do this. Create a folder on your smartphone. Yep, I shoehorned the term in nicely again. I don't like the term smartphone. I think it could have been bin 10 years ago because phones aren't just smart anymore, are they? Oh, no, they're much more than that. Sorry. Excuse the digression. Create a folder. Call it My Portfolio Important. And then add your best photos. Take them with your phone one at a time. And love them, appreciate them, edit them, value them and nurture them. Because these are your portfolio in its building phase. Now you might want to think of these like an old school photo album. It's a place to put your best photos and actually look at them. Or you could go crazy and create a photo book out of them. That's well worth doing and, and I recommend it to anybody. Why not give it a try? Get your photos out of your camera roll, off your phone and into a book. It's a great way to appreciate your photos. And there's something about having a book, having actual photos that you can hold and look at and touch. There's something about it which digital has not and never will replace, in my opinion. But it's the best photos that you take. You're not chucking loads of rubbish in there. Remember, your portfolio is 20 photos and no more. So when you take a photo you, that you think's one of the best that you've taken, just put that one photo in there. That's all you're doing, OK? Right, short episode this time. I'm already on to what do I do? Well, I bang on about this stuff, don't I? But I bang on about this stuff for a reason. I want to encourage everyone into photography to get out more taking photos, but also to take fewer, better photos. And I include myself in that. I need to get out more taking photos because it's good for the soul <laughs> and, of course, the portfolio. Yep, I need to do this as well. I'm not pointing a finger at you here. I'm pointing that finger straight back at me. OK, so this is what I used to do. I used to take loads of photos with very little thought. I'd download them onto my computer. I'd have a quick look at them. I'd be disappointed. I wouldn't edit any of them. And then I'd go out and do the same. And I'd do this over and over and over. I'd repeat this again and again and again. And every now and then I'd edit the odd photo, the odd decent image. But as the photos were taken with so little thought and were so average at best, I got disillusioned. There's only the odd decent image and they were obscured by a load of rubbish. So I probably consoled myself by, <laughs> by just buying more gear. I thought that was what I needed. Of course it wasn't. It's not the answer. What I needed to do was to stop and think what I was taking photos of. And that will apply forever and a day. This is something that we need to carry with us going forwards every time we take a photo. These days, I think before I press the shutter button, I try to take great photos, not just good photos, average photos, rubbish photos. Image quality is my priority. It's not quantity. And the best photos I've captured, they have all, without exception, they've had thought behind them. That's without exception. I have never, on the fly, without thinking about it, taken one of my best images. It's just never happened. And when I talk about taking time, it doesn't mean spending a lot of time. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of time. It can be a quick process. The thought processes can be quick. It's just a conscious thing that you do before you take a photo. I'm not saying you have to spend 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes doing this. No, just think before you take a photo. And before you take a photo, spend time looking. Walk around and look. The two superpowers of photography are walking and looking and thinking. That's three, isn't it? 
I've written loads of articles on this on my blog, which you can find on my other website, which is rickmacavoyphotography.com. Well, if I can't plug myself here on my own podcast, where can I? Okay, moving on, my survey on phones and cameras. Yeah, I've set up a survey on this subject, and I'd appreciate if you completed the survey, which will take two minutes and no more. Just head over to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash survey 2024. I'm going to pick up the survey results in a future episode, so thanks in anticipation for your assistance with this. Okay, some thoughts from the last episode. Well, take interesting photos. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? But how many times have you pressed the shutter button and not taken an interesting photo? I've done it loads of times. There's no... (laughs) It's all right. We're in this together. I've taken thousands of rubbish photos. And I can say that with some authority because since I wrote this episode and before I recorded it, I had a look in my Lightroom catalogue at how many photos I hadn't edited. And out of the 80-odd thousand photos, there's a lot I haven't edited. It's a lot. I haven't got an exact number, but it's, it's probably at least half. So I have potentially, on my hard drive, and being backed up to the cloud, 40 to 50,000 rubbish photos. And no, I haven't got the time to go through them all and delete them. I have the confidence to do that. I'm more than happy to do that. It doesn't it doesn't phase me to delete them all. Just the time thing. I've got other time priorities, like recording this splendid podcast, of course. Another great question. If I take this photo, will I be bothered to edit it? When I look at the photo on my computer or whatever device I edit my photo on, if I look at it and go, oh, I can't be bothered to edit that. Why did I take the photo in the first place? And if I can't be bothered to edit a photo and and I manage to drag some enthusiasm to edit it, why would anybody else be bothered? Why would you expect somebody else to be bothered to look at your photo if you really couldn't be bothered to edit it yourself? There's no reason, is there? No, there isn't. And get it right in camera. Another, another important thing. Get it right in camera and you'll save time and you've got better photos to work with. Technical correctness, it's an expectation these days, especially with all the tech available to us all. And this tech is available to all of us. It's amazing technology. The days of having to have a professional camera to take professional quality photos, those days are long gone. Sure, you can get potentially better images with higher quality, more expensive cameras, But it's not a guarantee by any stretch. It is not a guarantee. You can take rubbish photos with a great camera. Get it right in camera. It's more thinking, isn't it? It's more thinking about what you're taking a photo of and how you're taking it. And then there's my good old one photo rule. Or if you don't like that, my take fewer photos rule. This is all good stuff that can help us save loads of time that we don't need to spend, which which gives us more time to do the thing that we should be doing if we love photography, which is creating great new photos, not rubbish photos. What is not to love? What is the next episode of the Photography Explained podcast? I'm getting to the end of my series on taking better photos, which I started, would you believe, in episode 172, all the way back in January of this year. January! This episode's being published in August, so I've made this last eight months nearly. Blimey, how did that happen? And there have been more than the 11 episodes planned. So in the last of the series, I might do an episode about becoming excellent at one photography thing. Now, that's where I need to update my script, because I know I'm going to do an episode about becoming excellent at one photography thing, because the title is this, How to Find Your Photography Niche, 10 Top Tips from Me. Yep. And I've already written the script too, so we can scratch that. It might be this, because that's what it is. I've written it, and it's good. It's good stuff. Easy for me to say, I know. Okay, ask me a question for the Photography Explained podcast. If you've got a question you'd like me to answer, just email me, sales at rickmacavoyphotography.co.uk. 
or you can head over to the podcast website, photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start and find out what you need to do and how you can get in touch with me that way. And while you're at the website, check out the questions page where there's a big old list of things that you can choose from. My spell check doesn't like a big old list of things that you can choose from. It wants to change it to long list of options, which doesn't really work, does it? So go away, spell check. And yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, if you want to say hi, just say hi. It'd be great to hear from you. And everybody who takes the time and trouble to get in touch, I always reply, always reply. Okay, would you like a weekly email from me? Well, why wouldn't you, eh? If you'd like to receive a weekly email from me, where I tell you what I'm thinking about, fill out the form on the podcast website, and every Friday, you'll get a lovely email from me. How utterly splendid. Right, I'm done. This episode was brought to you by, well, it was a chicken and mayo sandwich washed down with water. Yep, healthy faces going well. And not the cheese on toast washed down with coffee, which was from the last episode. <laughs> which I consumed before I settled down in my homemade, acoustically cushioned recording emporium. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. It says here. And for giving me 27-ish minutes of your valuable time. Now, I reckon this episode will be about 20 minutes longer after I've edited out the mistakes and other bad stuff. Next episode's much longer. I know that because I've written the script, but now I'm reckoning about 20 minutes, which has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Right then, see you in the next episode. Take care, stay safe. Cheers from me, Rick. My brand new course, How to Become a Real Estate Photographer, Straight Talking Advice for Beginners to Get You Making Money Quickly and Build a Career, is available to buy now. Find out more at rickmacavoyphotography.com forward slash courses.